Hi, welcome back and or welcome to Lala's Lounge. This is my first video for random unsolicited thoughts. The basics of this channel actually is teaching the Izon language, but sometimes I want to talk about things that I think of randomly. So what I'm talking about today is coming to America. When the film initially aired, it aired in March. This is March. It aired on the 5th of March. On the day it premiered, celebrities all over the country dressed beautifully to for the premiere of Coming to America, dressed in their attires, beautiful regalia. It was all over Instagram, Twitter. Like, it was the bomb. It looked like it was something. It, was a, it looked like a festival. A festival. It was that big. In Lagos especially because you know how all the celebrities are in Lagos almost all of them are in Lagos so you no know, it was like a, it was like a farm fair that kind of thing so after the whole drama the whole beautiful all the beautiful clothes and everything they came back and said ah the film was work ah the film was this the film was that so I decided I wasn't going to watch it because of the many reviews that came out there it was trash it was it wasn't there was no content so i did not want to watch it initially but then i eventually did after a few weeks i think this is like third week after it aired so i eventually watched it and you know what i watched it with zero expectations because i was just watching it because i just wanted to join <laughs> the bandwagon so everyone was just like hey the costume is good but the film is trash so i just want, wanted to see the trash not like I was curious about anything, but I just wanted to watch it. That's what I did. And, well, I must say, in my opinion, the film wasn't so much trash as they said it was. The film wasn't trash at all. It's rather unfair for anyone to compare the original film to its sequel. Like, compare both. It's unfair anywhere. Anywhere, check any film, it cannot be the same. And the time frame and time difference is, is like 30 years thereabouts. So the story is going to be different, like not different, but then several things are going to change. And it can't always be as, that's why they say, the older the berry, the sweeter the juice. It can't be as sweet as the initial one, but then it has things for you to learn from. Coming to America is originally a film that was done by Craig Brewer in 1988 and it was a hit film then. I watched it when I was little and little. <laughs> I watched it when I was little and it was a hit. It was nice. It was a nice film and everybody knew how to do that. Good morning my neighbors! And it was like, fuck you! And I'm like, Yes! Fuck you too! Like, we still do that till now. My sisters and I, when we want to, like, just play around and do stuff. And my friends, we do that a lot. And it was, it's, it's been a blast since the beginning. And then they brought a sequel, Coming to America, still um, directed by Craig Brewer. It was done by Paramount Pictures in Tyler Perry Studios. And the house that was used to film that um, um, film was Rick Ross's house. And, <laughs> and Rick Ross also appeared in one part of the film. I don't know if I'm going to call this a review or an analysis, whatever it might be, but I'm going to do it based on my own perception of the film. Watching the film in Nigeria as in Nigeria and what I think about the film is what I'm going to say. I don't know, I think it's, it might be too late because the film aired in, uh, on the 5th of March and this is like the 20 something of March. But it's not like, we still have a whole week and some days before March runs out. But in reviewing or analyzing Coming to America, the first approach is going to be the cultural slash historical analysis of the film. The cultural and historical analysis of a film deals with 
the film's relationships to its broader cultural, historical, and even theoretical context. This means, does the film ask questions, reinforce, or even critique social or political issues at the time of its release? For instance, does it talk about gender, does it talk about sexuality or ethnicity and even tradition? Those people saying that there was no content in the film, were there cultures that were represented in the film? Was there history in the film? And how does it relate to what is happening today in the um, places that were mentioned in this film? And how does it affect today's society? That's what we're going to be talking about. So first and foremost, I would like to talk about how it relates to today's society. I was able to bring out some points that I saw in the film major part that I saw was gender equality. So the king had King Hakim or Prince Hakim as we know him had three daughters that were capable of protecting and defending the kingdom but none of them the eldest daughter couldn't rule because she was a girl and she was or she was a woman she couldn't rule the nation and that's something Gender equality is prevalent in the whole world right now, not just Africa. But talking about Africa, it is more predominant in Africa because people are still struggling. All over the world they are struggling, but the basis of this film, this film is set in an African society. And we see not just, um, not just the king's daughters that the king's daughter that couldn't rule, despite the fact that she was even more qualified, he had to go and look for his missing son in America to represent his missing son that doesn't even have cultural values of the people, but he was regarded to be uh, more qualified because he was a man, as opposed to the girl that had been in Zamunda all her life and knew the customs of the people and knew the cultures. So that's basis of gender equality in in um, coming to America that's one of the points the core point that it reinforces and when you talk about America you now the, the vice president is a woman and it's just talking about how these things can work in both America and this is like the first ever female vice president in America yes Despite how forward America seems, this is their first female vice president. So it's like it's just talking about the whole equality of genders and all those kind of things. In the end, Princess Mika became the ruler of Zamunda. That was really, really nice. People were talking about how there was no dinner more in the film. But everybody knew, everybody thought, when you were watching the film, you thought that Lavelle Johnson, because the whole film centered around him, was going to be the king. But in the end, you saw that it was the Princess Mika that became the ruler of Zamunda. And that was, that must have been, a, that was a done more to me. I don't know what other people saw and said there was no done more. And it couldn't even be better because... It was released on the 5th of March and on the 8th of March was International Women's Day. So it was like, hey, yeah, go girl, go girl, girl power, that kind of thing. And it wasn't even, it wasn't even gender baiting like people would say it would have been, but it wasn't gender baiting. It could have been a marketing strategy, but then it was still okay. I know that I've been rambling. I sound like I've been rambling. There was also the culture shock in the film. And that's something that happens to every human being. Every human being. When you leave where you are and go to another country with different cultures, you face the same thing. Like if you leave somewhere, if you leave Nigeria and go to Canada, you have culture shock because the things that are not allowed in Nigeria might be allowed in Canada. And they are culturally, not like legally or something. Legals are almost always the same. But culturally, there are many things that might be accepted here and not accepted in another place. So that was seen in 
Prince Lavelle Johnson. You could see that he was he had culture shock when he got to Zamunda. He like the customs were different from what he knew. Like you could see, you could see. I'm I'm saying like so much. You could see that in when he had to be circumcised, and despite the fact that he he did not understand it, but he still wanted to do it. Circumcision was a shock to him, and the fact that he had to go and get the whiskers of a lion in order to prove his bravery that was also that also came as a shock to him. And even the the royal groomer Mirembe, she when she told him that women couldn't have businesses in Zamunda, that also came as a shock to him. But the parts that I didn't quite get was how Lavelle Johnson was conceived. I did not like that part of the story because it gave me some weird feeling that I couldn't articulate very well because I thought that if it were a woman, if it were a, pre a queen or a princess that went to America and, and came back pregnant, it would have been a totally different story. It would have been a disgrace. It would have been something else. So I didn't quite agree with that part because like nobody should be. Rape isn't a joke. Whether it's done by a female to a male or a male to a female, rape isn't a joke. It's a very serious thing. And for them to have used that as the concept or the, the part where the um, princess um conception was from was not very right it didn't sit down very well with me because we're talking about gender equality what is fair for a woman should be fair for a man as well so yeah that was one of the parts that i i didn't like then another part that i didn't i didn't like was um the stereotypes is it just seemed like they reinforced some of of the stereotypes on black people in America, black Americans, Africans in America, because many times when there are books about, okay, let's take for instance, the former President Obama, his father wasn't in his life because his father was Ken Kenyan, his father is was Kenyan, so his mom was the one that practically raised him, so his father wasn't in the picture, and there are so many other black stories like that of people that when you watch Dope, for instance. In Dope, the boy's father, I can't remember his name, but it just came to mind. The boy's father was from Nigeria, according to the film, and his father wasn't present in his life either. So it's just like it's just like reinforcing a, a negative stereotype on Africans that are in America that maybe they, they go out and get married to African uh, to foreign women, white women or African Americans and then they live their lives just like that and let the children be the problem of the mom it's not like those things don't happen but then they are not the majority of the cases because i feel africans are responsible especially when it comes to family because we have this family thing it's an essential in africa so so that was a negative stereotype that was reinforced in the film and then about the black woman being um, Lavelle Johnson's mom being all ghetto and stuff it wasn't also very nice and the fact that she had to date rape the prince was something else that was a negative stereotype I already mentioned that another negative stereotype was um, Lavelle Johnson telling of the white rich employer would have been employer if he hadn't flopped the interview like taking out his whole anger on the right to rich kid it just seemed like african americans were were never do wells or are never do wells and they always call out people unnecessarily culturally <clears throat> for the like those things i've just mentioned they are they just reinforced the things that are predominant or evident in today's society another thing about this film although apart from that scene about the tripping the um, the king and um, prince hakim i think the other part of the film 
was nice because everybody could actually watch it everybody could relate to it because i think it was meant for everybody apart from that particular thing and i think that was a nice thing let's talk about the genre of the film as well it was a comedy it was meant to make people laugh although some people said they tried too hard to make people laugh and it wasn't funny blah 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 people always have prejudices i don't even know what they want from a film but the film was was interesting it was it was funny I think they got that, especially with the with the character of General Easy, Wesley Snipes. Somebody told me that Wesley Snipes is not a soft guy. He cannot be acting that kind of part. Excuse me. But Wesley Snipes is a good actor. Like he's beyond good, if there's another word for it. He killed the role totally. He brought in comedy and he came in with comic relief into film and it was really nice. Some people said they don't understand why the um, Imani Easy was still barking like a dog. Excuse me. Some things culturally are still accepted till today in Africa. When the king, and they were also talking about um, Tiana Taylor's part, where after all her sexy dance, when the prince told her to stay there and wait for him, it's, it's culturally, that's what, if your king, the king of your village tells you to wait for him here in this 2021 says your king you even see your king of your village even though your king is wretched your king tells you to to stay here and wait for him i don't think you're going to leave no matter how much money you have i don't think you are going to say, just say i beg our king could tell me say guys stay here they wait for him like it's not done even today so for people to say that that did not make a lot of sense. Excuse me, in Africa, in Nigeria particularly, it makes a lot of sense. Even king is too far. Even your elders, if your parent tells you to be here, you are most likely going to be there and wait for them, even if they are not coming. The highest you do is to call them and say, ah, are you still coming? Because respect is something that is predominant in our society. And respect even at your detriment is still predominant in our society so that is valid <laughs> generally it was a good film i liked it and i did not see the prejudices all the prejudices of other people in the film so yeah concerning the culture and traditions it was a nice film because so many cultures like in africa were were depicted there for instance for instance Mirembe, she's a popular south african um actress and south africa was being represented in both the costume and oh did i mention that the lady that did the costume in in black panther was the one that did the costume in this film as well so it was the costume was very nice and everybody admitted that the costume was really nice. Then it was nice that they used an African living in Africa as part of the that as part of the film. Then there was the use of African music was still something that was really nice. There was Tiwa Savage's Koruba playing in the background in one of the parties, and at the last scene. There was also the video performing assurance and that was really nice to incorporate not just incorporate the cultures without the people because yeah that wouldn't have been nice but then there were the people also in it as well as the cultures if you're able to watch to the end thank you for watching to the end of this video i hope to be doing more of this unsolicited thoughts like the video subscribe to this youtube channel if you haven't turn on your notification bell so that you'll be amongst the first people that know you get notified when i drop a new video be kind to yourself and be kind to one another until next time bye